Usually it would definitely complain doing that. Alright, we have the KLR back in the shop and we got to finish this thing up for the Adventure Palooza that I'm doing in uh, like three days. And as luck would have it, the carburetor has decided to leave the chat and this thing is running like crap. I actually had to uh, put it in my van to get it here instead of riding it. So this thing's been dead reliable since we've had it. And we've had this thing a long time, had it for years. I've never been into the carburetor. It's never been rebuilt. I don't think it's ever been off the bike. So it is impressive. This thing has uh, 15,000 miles on it. And in the last in the last year or so, I felt like the uh, the the pilot circuit has been starting to maybe clog up a bit. It just feels like it needs a little bit more fuel down low. I know these things are tuned uh, lean from the factory, but as of now, what this thing does is you go to start it and it will just rev all the way up and then it dumps fuel out of the overflow. So it's it's acting really silly. But we're still going to remove the carburetor on this thing and go ahead and give it a rebuild. So uh, let's get to it. Now these petcocks, they are vacuum operated. So when the engine is running, you get a vacuum signal into this port here, which allows the fuel to pump through. But for good safe measure, make sure your fuel is set to off and then go ahead and remove your lines. So go ahead and remove your side covers, remove your seat. I'm gonna be doing some other stuff to this bike anyway, but got your lines undone for the fuel tank. Undo a couple of fasteners up here where your plastics are, your rear brackets, your tank should come right off. All right, here we have plenty of access to the carburetor. This is a Kian CVK. This is a non-accelerator pump carb. And uh, these things are proven. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen the air box, both sides, we'll undo our throttle cables, undo the choke linkage, and get this thing out. This will probably be hard to see, but we need to get our choke out. So we got a 12 millimeter. Well, you guys can imagine what I'm doing, but <laughs> I gotta get my hand in the way. I should have went ahead and just drained this beforehand, but all right. There's so much in it.
All right, well overall this thing's actually looking pretty clean inside. Always room for improvement. My main focus is gonna be the mixture screw here. So we have a, uh, an aluminum Welsh plug over this. I'm gonna go ahead and drill that out. That way it gives us access to our mixture screw. And that fuel mix comes out just beyond the throttle blade. And that's mainly for uh, idle and off idle performance. Let's go ahead and get that out. I'm gonna not mess with my uh, throttle setting here. I'm just gonna keep it just where it's at. And yeah. Yeah, my brass actually looks really good too. There's absolutely just like nothing blocked or anything like that. It's getting dirtier the more I handle it just because my hands are so dirty and we're picking up crud from the outside of the carb. But yeah, let's go ahead and get that out. Go ahead and do a little center punch. And I've just got a small drill bit Now the mission here is to drill through this little aluminum cap, but the thing is you don't want to drill too far. You just want to break the surface of this. And if you're just going at it with a drill bit, you can go too far very easily. So we're going to do a little trick. We're going to use a little bit of a vacuum line, whatever kind of hose that you have that's going to fit over your designated drill bit. So what we'll do here, we'll line this up here. We left just enough for the end. And that creates a drill guide. That way we can't go too far in. We're through there with no damage, and our drill guide stopped us. All right, and then to remove this, I've got just like a little four millimeter tap. You could probably just put an easy out in this and just and be good right there. And what will probably happen is we'll start feeding some threads in here, and it will just break free just like that. Just twist and pull. There you have it, simple enough. And now we have our mixture screw exposed. Now before we remove this, we wanna take note of our factory settings. So we're gonna turn this thing in until it gently seats. So that's half, one, almost one and a quarter. So like one and an eighth. Yeah, so it was one and an eighth turns in. So we can go ahead and back this thing all the way out now. And then within this, you'll have your spring right there. And there's gonna be a metal washer right there and we'll have to fish at this one for a minute but then there's a rubber o-ring right there so this thing's torn down as far as we need it to go now i can go ahead and just uh, throw it in the ultrasonic real quick
Got a little dirt on the outside. I'm gonna run it just a little bit longer on the carb body. All right, this thing's fresh out of the ultrasonic. <clears throat> Looks really good. Was not that dirty to begin with. Obviously, we just had a little bit of dirt on the outside, so that's gonna come off really easy. But we are ready for reassembly. We have forced air through all of our ports, confirmed that it comes out of the other side, so everything is clean and clear. Key and CVKs are generally just really simple, really easy. As far as our brass, everything cleaned up fine. So our needle, I am going to replace the washer and the O-ring on it, just as a good me measure, because I have all of that stuff anyway. And then beyond that, everything else is going to be ready to go together. One thing I did notice, I just simply didn't have time for this, but right there, it might be hard to see, the O-ring for the bowl is starting to crack a little bit. And you can see it right there. But... It's just started acting up. I don't have enough time to order a part for it. It's not leaking right now, but that's definitely an area of concern in the, you know, as we go. And then one other last thing to touch on is I am going to shim the needle. So I have a washer here um, that I'm going to just stack under here. And that'll give us just a little bit more fuel. Hopefully uh, maybe a little bit more responsiveness or a little less uh, lugging down low. So anyway, time to reassemble.
to see, but I'm going to have to put the choke on after the carb. A little easier. Let's see how we did. Obviously there's no fuel in the bowl so it's got to pump some in. So it's one of those reasons why you'd uh, like to switch to a manual petcock just to uh, you know eliminate excessive starter. Alright, we got the bike warmed up and it seems to be running perfectly fine. Now my particular bike has had issues in the past where it seems like once it gets up to temperature and you ride it all day and it heat soaks, that the idle climbs on it and stuff like that. And uh, you know, time will only tell. We have that big ride coming up this weekend. We'll see how it acts then. But now I have control over the mixture and uh, I feel like I can help calm it down or something like that. Which is adding a little bit more fuel and helping cool it a little bit more. That roll-on power actually feels a little bit more smooth. So Kalars don't like being lugged. That is much better. All right, so down in second, we're doing. Not that the speed matters, but we're at 2,000 RPM. Usually, it would definitely complain doing that. So it just needed that fuel right at the bottom there. Another thing to note is D-cell popping. So this thing normally does it. It's a little bit more subtle on my bike because it is stock. Almost completely eradicated. Which is good. Alright, well I'm feeling good about those couple tweaks. The carburetor did in fact look very clean. Now we couldn't really see behind the mixer screw, but at least we got that out, cleaned it, replaced the O-ring in it. So now we have the adjustability of that. Should we need to make a change? But there you have it. Carburetor rebuilt on the KLR 650. This video is not quite a, a specific how-to on how to do that, but don't let it entertain me, you guys. It's a key in CDK. Those things are so simple. So just get in there, do the best you can, clean it, Keep track of all your settings, put it back together, you'll be good to go. But I am confident in this thing now, and uh, we're ready to ride.
But let me know if you guys want to see more KLR content. I am planning on putting out a video on the Adventure Palooza, of course, just like I did the last two years. So check those out if you haven't seen them. But yeah, hope you guys like this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.